Welcome into the channel everyone. Today we put our mad scientist caps on because we all know we can TIG weld aluminum and we can stick weld aluminum, but can we do them together? Okay guys, so hear me out. Before we get started, we got to know at least a little bit of the theory of why we even TIG weld aluminum on AC in the first place. And the biggest reason is because this oxide layer that aluminum tends to develop a lot like rust, but it's not rust because it actually protects the aluminum. It melts at a much higher temperature than the aluminum itself. That being the case, we need AC current because on the positive side of stuff, we get this cleaning action and on the bottom, we get penetration. When we get down into the DC negative side of stuff, AC will bounce in between both of those. And of course we can change our waveforms in order to get a different type of bead that we're looking for. But what that ends up doing is it takes the positive polarity as we weld on AC and breaks up the oxides away. So if we have a little weld pool right here, you're gonna see that etching effect and it's gonna be blowing back that oxide and then going into DCEN to penetrate that base metal and put in a weld. So it goes back and forth again to clean and to penetrate. Now when we stick weld aluminum, we typically run DCEP, stay on that positive side of stuff. And in my opinion, tends to lack some penetration when it comes to uh, you know, some typical fillet welds and stuff like that. It's a trickier process to hone in on, but it does work. Now what happens if we try to weld DC negative with a TIG torch, so we got all the penetration we need, but we use a stick rod that has all the flux to do the cleaning. That's what today's episode is gonna be about. We're gonna do a little stig welding. Now we are gonna get a baseline first and we're gonna just go ahead and TIG weld one of these joints. We've got some quarter inch aluminum plate. I went ahead and put a little bit of a bevel because I do wanna blister up the backside and get some full complete joint penetration for both of these welds. So we are gonna be running about 200 amps. We got you know quarter inch plate. I really wanna see that penetration. So we'll have the 200 amps from this Typhoon 230 from Everlast. We will have our foot pedal. We will be running high frequency. And we've got, of course, our different waveforms like trapezoid waveform, just to see if we can control some more penetration. Because I don't have a water cooler, I do like to run my heavy hitter TIG rig, which is my 200 amp, uh, it's 217, which is 200 series 17 torch. Basically, you can hook it up. All you gotta do is have a different connection right here. I've got a little jumper for it. And you're gonna bypass this gas valve basically the only thing that you're not going to get on this is a pre or post flow but it's all right because we got valves on the torches uh, both one at the back and one at the front in order to control that gas we'll still have all that high frequency we'll still have ac current we still have everything we have we just don't have the post flow but we do got a lot of beams we've got our balance or frequency set we're going to go ahead and run our first bead with tig all the way across try to get a good weld on there good penetration and then we're going to switch to dc negative and use a stick rod as our filler metal. So you guys know how it goes. We can't do this stuff without you guys watching and without our trusted partners helping us out. So be sure to go check out the links down in the description for our people like Heavy Hitters, Outlaw Leather. I'll be using this carbon fiber hood. Man, this is the lightest hood that I own, as well as this little carbon fiber TIG finger so I can keep my finger on the plate as I come across without it getting hot because we're going to be running pretty hot, man. So do me a favor, go check out the links down in the description. We've got some cool stuff and some cool deals for you all. Now let's get some wire running. It's going in. I can't tell if I'm blistering anything though. Ooh, no, I'm not really, not really breaking down that backside. I want to really spend a little bit more time on it then. The gap's getting a little wider. We'll probably get some fusion back there. You know, it's not the worst thing that I welded, but I definitely should have prepped a little bit better for this. I um, mean, we got some blistering on the back side, but it's not eating away all those edges. Luckily for you all, this isn't a, a video on how to get full penetration with uh, TIG welding AC aluminum, but we are switching now to DC negative. 
and gonna run this thing with some uh what are these we got some illuminator used for general welding on one three five and six thousand series eighth inch diameter flux coated i bet this is gonna weld like mud let's try it out i will admit i have very little faith that this will work but in theory it should maybe the flux there's the flux huh this is interesting to look at definitely don't need the 200 amps trying to see through this slag coating I can almost guarantee you I'm getting a lot more penetration or at least I'm trying almost not to do it because it just looks like it's just getting right through that aluminum. I might try some pulse in here in a second. I think that might maybe help some of these qualities, characteristics. Try some pulse, some triangle pulse. I really don't know if there's a whole lot to talk about right here. I mean, one, you better not be sitting in a chair or be prepared for all that drippy slag. That stuff just fell right off. But with that negative, we definitely got hella more penetration. It was almost too easy to get through the aluminum, which isn't ideal. Tons of undercut, tons of suck back. Um, I mean, one of those things where it's like, if you would have ever needed to DC negative with some stick rods, I, it'll hold. I'm pretty confident this is going to hold. I didn't say it wasn't going to crack, but it'll hold for something, some non-structural. If you're in a pinch, I don't see why you couldn't. The biggest issue, at least with a 2G weld, is, man, there's a lot of undercut on the top side of this weld. It was hard to keep all that metal from being so drippy, especially with all that slag and nastiness in there too. Uh, but I mean, it's one of those things is like, can you? I think so. I think you even got like one half inch of solid weld that's reinforced. It doesn't have too much undercut or at least is where it needs to be. But I mean, it's welded. It looks like someone just trying to learn how to weld aluminum for the first time back when they invented it but it's welded just for some smgs i'm gonna go ahead and run one of these aluminum stick rods dc positive see what happens just i don't know i haven't run one of these in a long time i hate welding with them so i can already uh, kind of guess what it's gonna look like ow that sucker popped off right into my pants. Whoa, that thing just disappears. Yeah, these stick rods, we're at about 100 amps right now. It definitely is a uh, no point in trying to figure it out with TIG uh, and use it as a filler metal. I think that went way faster and it looks cleaner i would go ahead and just go ahead and say can you dc negative with some stick filler i guess should you nah nah just do one or the other man now i'm almost certain that we didn't help anyone on today's episode but thanks for watching guys and be sure to go down in the description down below check out all of our links from our cool partners let us know what in the comments you want to see us experiment on next thanks for watching